Hi. Hi. It's Roger's death set. Death set. Thank you so much. Um, welcome. So Thank nice you. To see you. Um, nice to see you too. Hi, Kate. Hi. So Mary is a mixed media artist who is currently focused on portraits, uh, realist and stylized from acrylic and watercolor paintings, artist books, prints, 3D constructions and photography, something indefinitely human shows up, uh, usually shows up in her art, often paired with social justice content, recycled or reused materials, or maybe it's just a rendering of something or someone compelling that has caught her eye. Mary's ongoing censorship series, a visual commentary on injustice, continues stemming from years of activism, outrage, and hope for a better future for all of us human and non-human. Speaking Mary, of which. Speaking of which, here's a, here's a tale to show. <laughs> he, he heard the cue and there it is. <laughs> Animals have that ability, right? They, they know they when do. they're being called. Or at least they think they do. So Mary, um, can you tell us about your current body of work? Yeah, um, it, I guess the old and the new is the best way to frame that. Um, first the old. Do you have any idea how exciting it is to finish unfinished paintings, ones that you've, uh, for whatever reason, couldn't bring yourself to paint over, and after almost 40 years, uh, get hit, hit, hit in the head with, no, you wouldn't know 40 years, but anyway, <laughs> you get solutions. I mean, and I'm finishing up two of those right now, both portraits wow. of people that I knew, and I'm almost giddy with anticipation. I can't wait to get back to them. And, um, and then for the new, newer, um, as a way of dealing with creative block, I've been getting back to something that I, I learned in art school decades ago, keep sketching. And I've been digging through photographs that I've taken with the specific purpose of including them as uh, somehow incorporating them into paintings or, or prints, and it's mostly portraits. And because that's what I specialize in. So I, so whatever other creative detours I take, I always come back to, to portraits. I like that, creative detours. So what would be an example of a creative detour for you? Well, um, let's see. Um, working with color and abstraction, I've, um, I hate to waste anything. So like when I'm done painting and I still have paint on, on the palette, to do something with that paint and just face a blank canvas and start painting on it and not worry about what it is. And actually that's worked out so well that um, my last open studio that we had at Wall, those were the things that sold. So <laughs> interesting. Did you not expect them to sell? Did you not expect the? No, I mean I like them. I mean I, it wasn't just slapping paint on there. I thought about the colors and the shapes and the textures right. yeah. and all that. But um, yeah, I mean I was I was kind of surprised that they worked out so well. That's delightful, right? To sort of you know switch things up a little bit and have that creative detour and yeah, and have it be really rewarding that way. That you know you enjoy it and other people are as well. That's, that's very fun. Um, so what, so you said you started those, you said you had the old and the new, and I'm really curious about the old work. You said you were finishing portraits um, that you started a long time ago. Yeah. Do you feel differently about the people in the portraits that you, at this point now, than you did when you started those? Oh, definitely. In fact, one of them was an old boyfriend, and I think that's why it took so long to get back to it. I had to get rid of all the <laughs> negative feelings. <laughs> now I just feel pity, but you know, at the time, <laughs> it was right. a lot of anger and, and disgust and, you know, disappointment and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, totally different. And so well, now I, I can approach it as something has no connection to me personally or emotionally. That's and pretty cool. That, that emotional, yeah. yeah, the emotional charge has been released and uh, sounds like it just took a few years for it to happen. And yeah. I'm glad you didn't throw out the portrait. Um, you just held on to it a little while until time was right, is what it sounds like. Yeah, and then the other one was, um, it, was a, it was really kind of a funny situation. Um, I, I went to Santa Cruz with this really good friend of mine, Marie. She's from Quebec. And um, we picked up these two women hitchhikers who were from France. 
And so these three French women, they just got, they had a great time. But the first thing that Marie says is, just, no, 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 you must not eat Jake in this country. It is too dangerous. <laughs> so she's lecturing these women, but we all, so it's basically, we brought them back to Sacramento with us. And um, it's a portrait of the three of them sitting in front of Marie's house on Capitol Avenue. And um, it was just, I mean, Marie moved decades ago and, I, you know, I, but I really liked these two women. I'll never see them again. Um, but there was just a wonderful feeling about that whole situation. And um, so, yeah. Just a fun time to reflect back on. Is that what, it, you know? Yeah. 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 That's, that's pretty fun. And it's nice to have the story, that depth of story behind a lot of your work. Do you feel like all of your portraits go that deep and have stories like that behind them? Is that one of the inspirational things? Not really. Sometimes it? it's, it's just um, the way someone looks or an expression on their face or uh, um, the, uh, or I, I like to, I, ideally, a portrait for me is not someone just sitting there. It's someone doing something or expressing something. And um, so sometimes I'll see an interesting position. Maybe somebody's, you know, crouched down or something like that. And just, you know, how, how do I, you know, it, it's always kind of fun to get the proportions right because I'm a little bit obsessive. I used to be an editor. Um, so I want to, <laughs> and <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's there's a lot of different things that, that go into what I want to paint and or draw or print or whatever. Okay. Do you have um, a favorite project or commission from the past couple of years? Something that you really love doing? Well, project, definitely the abstraction of just okay. um, going in that different direction. And it is very liberating and, and, and you know, it just, it just made me feel happy. That's really great, especially right now oh, when there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of gray, or it can feel like there's a lot of gray. Um, oh, yeah. Are you still doing some of that abstract work currently or not at the moment? Yeah, um, I am. Okay. I mean, this is one. Um, oh, awesome. I, uh, that was, um, yeah, it just, I have, I have these old recycled boxes from a, uh, a hardware store that closed a long time ago and I still have a bunch of them and and so I'm trying to incorporate them into you know doing a little 3D thing and usually I put something inside this doesn't have anything inside yet so it's still in progress. So when you put something inside is it forever encased inside can you get can you get to it again or is it no, sort of like I, a I, it's it's I leave them open generally although then I think about well you know if somebody actually ever want to buy one of these things um I might want to put a little door on it to keep the dust out. Right, right. And so are those wooden boxes then? They look pretty sturdy. Yeah, yeah, they're wood. Yes. Okay. Well, that is very fun. Um, do you feel like, you know, the abstraction is bringing a very joyful element to your work right now? Um, do you feel, which we we're talking about being really needed with COVID-19 and everything going on, do you think that the whole shelter in place um, pandemic situation has changed your process? Or does it feel roughly the same? Well, well, it's kind of a continuation of what started when I retired three years ago. Um, you know, more time in the studio to focus on and create art. Um, you know, I retired from a technical editing and graphic design career. So I've always combined words and images. This is part of my creative DNA, I guess. And um, but, you know, COVID-19 has, has just brought a ton of trauma and along with it, all the societal nightmares we're dealing with. And, and so I'm feeling an urgency to speak out about those. But, you know, the images haven't been flooding in. It's just like, I don't want to do just another portrait of some person that got killed or some horrible political person who I just can't bear to look at, much less paint. Um, and um, so... But what's happened is suddenly these limericks keep popping into my head. Really? I, I don't, I didn't intend to do them, but there's <laughs> almost a hundred so far and I can't stop them. Limericks, so, you said limericks, limericks. right? Yeah. Wow. 
You want one here? One? <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, as long as it's pretty clean, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, my these limb works aren't dirty. Um, okay. okay, so let's see if I can remember the first one I did. Okay, Black Lives Matter. You know that it's true. From that concept, a great movement grew. George Floyd won't die in vain. His unspeakable pain brings a world. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't planning to do that. Uh, well, that's brings okay. a much better world into view. There we go. Wow. So anyway, um, ideally, so that's, I'm just going to keep, as long as they keep popping into my head, I'm going to keep writing them. But, uh, so what I would like to do eventually is combine them with images, probably in a, some kind of book arts project, incorporating a bunch of recycled stuff that I have from uh, other places. I so, think that'll so. be a really interesting project, Mary, to see that because you've spent a career doing, like you said, pairing words with images, with editing and graphic design, and now this is, um, this is starting to show up in your work, in your personal work, in this way, do you feel like you um, are surprised, really surprised by this? I'm not surprised about incorporating words and, and images because some of my work, um, you know, I, I, I really love typography as well. So I actually use letters as image, is some of my more, more abstract work is, is incorporating you know, the letter forms into a, a work that you don't necessarily see the letters, but you see the forms and some of them are so beautiful, but um, So yeah, it's not surprise. I mean, limericks are surprising. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I sort of sad that I'm not a poet. I, I've written some poetry. It's not great poetry. Some of it wasn't so bad, but the um, You know, limericks are, you know, considered low verse and that's fine. I mean, now that I'm getting older and I've learned to just let the per perfection stuff go. I mean, I can just enjoy the fun of it. Yeah, it, I think uh, having a lot of fun with what you're doing and the process is super important. Um, yeah, we need that fun right now. <laughs> we really need the fun and, you know, we always need it. So, so incorporate it any way you can. Um, so, Mary, we're going to wrap up here. I want to thank you for being here. Um, I would also love to ask you, uh, will you be going live today and tomorrow? Um, no, the I won't be. Studio? No. No, okay. And I'm just going to watch everybody else. That'll be a lot of fun. It is it's wonderful learn... so far. Oh, good. Um, where can we find you or connect with you if we want to learn more about your work and see more of your work? Well, my, my Instagram tag is Art by Meatless Mary. Art by Meatless Mary. That's a pretty good, pretty memorable tag. I love it. And people, can they just send you a direct message through Instagram if they want to connect? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you again for being here and making awesome work and being a part of Open Studios. It's really cool to see your work and um, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm happy too and I really appreciate this. Thanks very much for making this possible.